Hi, my name is Dakota, and I'm here with my best friend Jenna. Aww. And uh, we are gonna do a Q&A. I asked you guys some questions on Twitter and Instagram to leave us some spiritual questions to answer. And this is <laughs> it, this is the video. Okay, so question one. When did you first start connecting to spirituality? Um, I think I was always drawn to it as a child and a yeah. teenager. I loved crystals and incense and I liked I liked imagery that kind of like evoked feelings within me that I didn't understand. But it wasn't until I was like 21 um, that I actually started experiencing really bad body pain. And so I wanted to work on that with massage and osteopathy and things like that. And I remember going to this osteopath. I guess. Oh, yeah. Anyway, this man was really helping me with my body pain and he said, don't be afraid if you start to develop an awareness for things that scares you. I didn't understand what that meant, but he's like, you're going to look at situations and you're going to be outside your body and you're going to take a step back and you're not going to, you're going to be able to work with it before you react. You're going to be, be able to respond before you react. And I, I was like, I don't really know what that means. And that happened? But it did. Yeah. So yeah. my body pain kind of like cleared my mind enough. I feel the same too, like for me, mm -hmm. as far as like when I was a kid, like now when I look back to when I was a kid, it makes sense. Like I can see the connection of like it leading up to where I'm at now. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So like I feel like I've always been on like a spiritual path, but I didn't, maybe I didn't know how to explain it or know that I was on it when I was mm -hmm. a kid. But now like looking back, I can see all the dots kind of connect. Totally. Yeah. And I think becoming vegetarian, like starting yeah. when, I, when I took meat out of my diet, everything changed. Yeah, I think so too, because it like it. You have to like look at things differently mm -hmm. if you like when you take on a vegetarian diet. You kind of take a step back and see it for what it is, kind of. Mm -hmm. You know, totally. And I feel like just that step of like really seeing the like our impact on other animals' lives and the environment, and like being conscious of that is like a really big step into mm -hmm. becoming spiritual. I think, and like mm -hmm. tuning into that part of ourselves. Yeah, not just accepting what's been given to you as the truth. Okay, question two. Mm -hmm. How do you keep in tune with the spiritual side of yourself while being on tour and like being surrounded like in an environment that's not mm. spiritually, you know, uh, nourishing? Mm -hmm. so it's not that? natural. Yeah. It's actually really unnatural. For me, I realized the last few days that I haven't looked at the sun and I'm like, where have I been? I didn't even look at the sun today. That's a huge deal. Yeah. To not see the sun or the moon, to not breathe um, outdoor oxygen, yeah. to not be barefoot. Those things that get me disconnected. Yeah, so it's just about like practicing, having a practice that like of something you kind of integrate into your life. Then. Absolutely, like, yeah. Like just tuning in with nature. And I think people freak out because they're like, I don't know how to meditate. I don't do yoga. I'm not good at this or that. And they think that it has to be um, by someone else's example. But it's really yeah. just your own process. If you can do something for 10, 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, Wherever you need to begin, if you can do one thing and focus on it without thinking about other things, yeah. that's meditation. Yeah. So don't feel like you need to sit here like a yogi, <laughs> having like spiritual thoughts. That's not necessarily what's going to create yeah. spiritual practice. It's yeah. like reading a book for 10 minutes a day that's, that's educational or listening to a certain type of music that's healing for you. Or just going outside and like looking at the clouds and the sun. And mm -hmm. the That'll moon. do it. I think it's really important to own it when you need to take time out. Yeah. I always used to think when I go to my bunk and shut the curtain and turn the light out that that made me lazy or antisocial and all these things and that that language is kind of like as you were saying a judgment. So from the that's really just the outside perspective of what I'm doing, but the inside perspective of what I'm doing is that I really need this time out and I can't explain why and I can't justify it, but I know that my body is calling for me to be alone and um that's something that I want to share with people is to own it. If you need to take a solo adventure, you need to take 10 hours, 14 hours to sleep, whatever it is, just listen to your body and take that time. Um, and another thing for me being on the road is like to be able to call up friends who I would consider my teachers or just your friends who you consider your friends. But I would consider you a teacher and I would reach out to you and I would say like, hey, I feel restless and I don't know what's up, but I just need to have a real conversation. Let's get to a level together. Yeah. And I think that's like it's a healthy thing to do is to admit when you need help. And I think that that phrase sometimes is for people they think, oh, save that for trauma, save that for crisis, but not necessarily. If you're having a down day and you need to connect with someone, you need to communicate, you don't know what about, but follow that intuition and call your friend up and get to a level. Okay, question three. <laughs> What's a simple lesson that you've learned that has guided you towards who you are now? A simple lesson. Some 
not hard. <laughs> okay. Sort of like a lesson that was like a stepping stone. That is like, okay, here's this thing happened, and now I'm Jedi because of this okay. thing. This simple thing. Okay, so something for me is when I'm interacting with people, I, um, I feel like, oh, I need to be funny, or I need to be more confident, I need to share a funny story, or... Because yeah. that's what I see in people, and I think that makes them a good interactor. Yeah. So I remember. I feel that. Yeah, I'm sure you do. With mm. both Gemini's, we probably go through a lot of the same social struggles. Yeah. <laughs> but like, I remember meeting, starting to meet people in bands as a young teenager, and sort of being not a young teenager, just sort of in my late teenage years, and being like taken back and intimidated, and sort of saying like, how come some people are able to connect with people on that level, whereas I wasn't. Yeah. Um, and I was over the last few years it's just been experimenting with the idea that energetically we're not all on the same wavelength. Yeah. So it's okay if you meet someone and you don't hit it off, you don't connect, you don't these fireworks don't happen, like you know, maybe you weren't meant to yeah. have that and connection it's, with that. And it's person. just about like being who you are. Like you don't mm -hmm. have to like Yeah. Don't have expectations of like other people. It's like as long as you are doing what you are doing, it's all totally. you can do. Yeah. I think I tried to design that way too much. Yeah. Um, just because I saw other people's example being the right way. But I, I have had some awesome support and advice in my life of people sort of saying that's not your energy, that's not your personality yeah. and just accepting that there are people that you do meet and connect with really instantly, easily and when that doesn't happen that's okay. There's not a lesson to be learned from that, it's just sort of like a be at peace with that, be at peace with yourself, move on. <laughs> Good advice. So just focusing on like spirituality has it helped you overcome like you know there's kind of just the things that we all deal with like depression and anxiety has spirituality helped you like overcome those sort of like things that we have to work our work through as mm. human beings on this planet I think it's given me a lot of tools yeah to um, like I was saying before respond not react take a second yeah. take a breath um, they they're kind of things that can't be verbally passed on to other people. So even right now, if I'm talking about my tools, it's not as if my tools are going to work for another person. Yeah. It's really just about working through it in the moment. So spirituality, um, I mean, can you can you answer this question? <sighs> so I think like a misconception about what spirituality is, is that there's like some transformative like moment or mm -hmm. thing that we're working towards. And I, I, think that, I think that's what it is. I think what spirituality actually is, is like just taking a second to like be who you already are and mm -hmm. not letting these like expectations of like culture or, like society mm -hmm. sort of like dictate who we are as mm -hmm. individuals so I think it's like real true spirituality is not some transformative thing it's just being in the moment it's actually an acceptance of who you yeah, already who are acceptance who you're of who born you already to be. Are. yeah exactly and we're just kind of stripping away all the layers on top of that the, all yeah. the fuzz all the gray matter all like, the like I mean I'm thinking like static like all yeah. the stuff that we are seriously packing on yeah um, to fit in or to accept ourselves or just as as if we've picked it up like we're a magnet We're picking up all this shit from the material world that is literally blocking the clarity that we are already have access to yeah um, So I guess it's the attraction to a spiritual life like if you're reading books you're listening to music you're having conversations You're sort of stimulating that part of your brain of course It's gonna of course it's gonna change your life and, and sort of give you a distance between you and depression you and anxiety Because yeah. um, you're constantly learning I heard this term the other day, we're teachable. We are constant students. Yeah. Accept yourself as a constant student. I agree with that. <laughs> so question five, does your diet affect your spirituality? Like being vegan or vegetarian, is that like, we kind of just talked about it, but is, mm -hmm. does that, is that a step you have to take into like tuning in or becoming an aligned, higher version of yourself? I think it has to call you. Like I wouldn't prescribe it to people. Yeah. I think people have to be ready to become a vegetarian or ready to, become vegan or to eat raw or to eat organic, all those kind of things, they need to be important to you before yeah. you do it. And if they are important to you, you know that you're already kind of aligning yourself with a mindfulness for like everything that you intake. So if you if you recognize that the energy of the food that you are eating is gonna affect your energy, mm -hmm. and therefore your relationships, then um, I think that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, that's a cool way to look at it. It's like, it's like because I mean everything ultimately is energy, so I guess like it's not that weird to assume that by consuming mm -hmm. this like mm -hmm. brutal energetic sort of exchange between our food and like because we kind of are disassociate with all of like the, the stuff leading up to being on our plate. That's mm -hmm. why it's like so easy for us just to eat right. meat. 
because we we don't see all that kind of stuff. So I think about like acknowledging that is a big step mm -hmm. into like becoming a more compassionate being. Absolutely. Is just by recognizing that like animals are our friends. We, mm -hmm. need, we, we need to take care of them. Right. And the we're environment. not so different. We we're not different. We're just in different bodies. Like know, Watts, the cat that's somewhere wherever here, he is. wherever he's at. When you like hang out with them, you can like you can see there is something in there. Mm -hmm. Like like yeah, looking definitely. back at you, you're just in different bodies. Like he just can't mm -hmm. use English to talk to me and be like, hey. Mm -hmm. So he just you know does cat things instead. But. A friend of mine, Joel from his like houses, said to me once that um, we should eat intelligent food. Mm -hmm. uh, that rocked my world. It's enough as a sentence without even breaking it down. Intelligent food it says a lot. Um, and we can start talking about low vibrational foods, things yeah. that don't really serve us. They just kind of fill yeah, a hole. Yeah, because I mean, it is, it is low vibrational, like to kill something. It's a really primitive thing almost, you know? Mm -hmm. oh, it's yeah. like a really, like, keeping us really anchored to, like, this animalistic, right. our nature of, like, the animal. It's not higher. It's not a higher thing. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, as human beings, we have the capacity to tune into higher things. So it's like, we should be so willing to just stay on that low platform. Mm -hmm. And we, we don't recognize that a lot of the time. Yeah, when we're hard. angry, we're agitated, oh, we're yeah, anxious, no, so we're hard. depressed, we're, we're low, we're like feisty, all these things. It's like things. you're drowning. Yeah, totally, yeah. man. That's, that's pain in your body. That's, like, that's you suffering. So if you, if you feel that you're angry, hurt, I don't know, anxiety, all these things, um, it's an indication that your lifestyle is not serving you. Yeah. Whether that's the people in it, the food that you're consuming, your environment, where, whatever the element is, all of those things are signs that change is really necessary. So don't accept anxiety, depression, yeah. agitation, all of these things. It, it's not, that's not the, your highest high. Don't be so happy to agree with the terms and, and uh, agreements of like a reality you don't even agree with. Mm -hmm. You know, you you have the capacity, like you have, you are the source of your unhappiness. So you just kind of kind of work through and figure out how to, to associate yourself with that instead of like identifying with the sort of negative thoughts. Mm. You kind of just made me think of like an amplifier, like a guitar amp or like a pedal or something like that. Every band is going to have like completely different mm. attunements to the effects and the gain and the volume and the treble and the bass and all this kind of stuff is going to be different for everyone. So fine tune your, yeah. you know, your guitar pedal of life. Yeah. And, there you go. And make your own sound. Yeah, make your own song. Vibration. Create your own song of life. That's why you're here, ultimately, to make something beautiful. I think, maybe. It seems like why we're here. I don't I know. I think so. Wait. I back it. <laughs> we got this thing. What is this thing called? It's a wheatgrass. Jenna bought this wheatgrass thing because she was going to try to eat it or something. I, I don't know. She was going to try to eat this and then realized she could eat it, so she gave it to me instead. So you're going to plant it somewhere. So we're going to plant this. We need a name for it. So leave a name, leave a name for this wheatgrass plant in the comments. Name this thing f for us. <laughs> so I think that's it. That's nice. Uh, so yeah, follow Jenna on all her socials. I'll leave it in the description. Follow me on my socials and all that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, reconnect with love, express it out into the universe and everything will be okay. My name is Dakota. My name is Jenna. Uh, Hare Krishna. Thank you. Bloop. Ha, 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 ha.